Um, the reality is, is that I remain committed to doing everything I set forward in my campaign. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a fake. I, I, I didn't materialize from thin air. I worked damn hard to get where I got my entire life. Life wasn't easy. It didn't start off easy. As I've said it many, many times, I come from abject poverty. I made some mistakes and I own up to them. The, and now I want to put this thing past is, me so I can deliver for the American people. Oh, Tulsi Gabbard filled in for Tucker Carlson to interview uh, Congressman elect George Santos on his numerous lies throughout his campaign. Although he contends that he's not a fraud, <laughs> many people are saying it. Um, but she pull, actually pulls no punches and uh, asks him directly if he has no shame. The thing is, Congressman elect, uh, integrity means yes, carrying yourself with honor, but it means it means telling the truth, being a person of integrity. Of and if I were one of those in New York's third district right now, now that the election is over, and I'm finding out all of these lies that you've told, not just one little lie or one little embellishment, these are blatant lies. My question is, do you have no shame? Do you have no shame in the people well, who are now you're asking to trust you to go and be their voice for them, their families and their kids in Washington? Tulsi, I can say the same thing about the Democrats and, and the party. Look at Joe Biden. Joe Biden's been lying to the American people for 40 years. He's the president of the United States. Democrats resoundly support him. Do they have no shame? This, Look, this I've is, made this very this clear. Is not, this I is made, not about the Democratic Party, though. This is. Just to be clear, his answer to the question, do you have no shame, was a resounding yes, I have no shame. <laughs> but there's a lot more uh, soundbite moments from this interview with Santos sitting in the hot seat. So let's listen to some of those. <laughs> I understand everybody wants to nitpick at me. I, I'm going to reassure this once and for all. I'm not a facade, I'm not a persona. The results that people are looking yeah, well, for I are called into question when you tell Blatant lies, not embellishments, and this is this is, I think, one of the biggest concerns, Congressman Elect. Is it debatable or is it just false? No, it's very debatable. No, no, it's not false at all. It's it's debatable, but that's not what I campaigned on. I campaigned on delivering results wow. for the American people by, by lowering inflation. I can sit down, and if you want to have that discussion, I'd be glad to, Tulsi, to explain that to you Con and make sure that we, we we settle the score. This is not about settling scores, and I think you just you just kind of highlighted, I think, my concern, the concern that people at home have. You're saying that this discussion will go way above the heads of the American people, basically insulting their intelligence. So not only are you now that's backtracking not, that's not on what these I'm lies saying. that I you've told. I'm not just a liar and a fraud. I also think I'm better than you. <laughs> so Tulsi finishes this disastrous interview with Santos. Uh, who still won't admit to all his lies. Everybody just wants to push me and call me a liar. Look, well, I embellished my Alex resume. Santos. I did. Congressman Alex Santos, we, we've given you a lot of time. I think the time that is owed is to the people of New York's third. Uh, it's hard to imagine how they could possibly trust your explanations when you're not really even willing to admit the depth of your deception to them. Thank you so much for being here and joining us. Thank you, Tulsi. But that was honestly really fun to watch, having paid close attention to uh, the Santos story as it's been coming out and in installments as if it was the Twitter files. Um, but honestly, he's beyond defense at this point. But of course, that won't stop some of the uh, least brightest people <laughs> to uh, come to his aid. So here's Marjorie Taylor Greene's just egregious tweet. She said, George Santos lied about his resume and the left is demanding he resign. Ilhan Omar said she didn't marry her brother, she lied. Elizabeth Warren said she was Native American Indian, she lied. The left said George Floyd didn't die of a drug overdose, they lied. I mean, of course, everything that she said is egregiously disgusting and untrue. Ilhan Omar did not marry her brother, that is a racist Islamophobic smear that has been levied against her. Said she, you know, became, you know, a politician. Of course, George Floyd died from having his neck kneeled on for nine minutes. He did not die of a drug overdose. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is a dishonest person, so of course she's going to defend another dishonest person. She's disgusting. But I do want to, before I throw it to you, Jessica, I do just just want to say, 
Tulsi Gabbard really doesn't have a leg to stand on here. I liked watching her rip this man apart, you know, with a smile on her face because I think he's a piece of trash. But she's filling in for Tucker Carlson and she thinks that she has the moral high ground when talking about lies and deception. This is a woman who spreads, you know, egregiously false information to fear monger trans people and gay people. She's a deeply homophobic person. She's a part of a cult. Literally a member of a cult that is based on, you know, lies. And so, I mean, it's it's just ridiculous to me. Jessica, what are your thoughts about George Santos? Yeah, I mean, Tulsi was someone who pretended to be a progressive. Uh, so she's so <laughs> lied on the campaign trail before as well. Uh, and for her to talk about her family's past and talk about you know, these LGBTQ conversion camps that her family ran and for her to say that's in her past and then to completely flip just a couple years later and call the LGBTQ plus community a bunch of groomers along with all of the right in America, it's just really disappointing. I mean, that was a lie. You don't change your mind within a couple of years that quickly it's clear that she was lying to run for the Democratic nomination for president because she thought that was her best shot at, at getting it. Uh, so she's done this, the same thing, uh, just lying about different stuff. But the thing about George Santos is, is he lied about his resume. We're not used to politicians lying about their resume. We're used to them, you know, being nepotism babies who who easily get into to Goldman Sachs and work for Goldman Sachs and go to the, the top financial institutions. But he is a, a finance bro through and through. So regardless of whether or not he went to Goldman or has the background in finance, he has all of the key elements, which is when he's being accused of something and someone a woman is trying to hold him accountable, he's completely shirking it and just saying like, well, people are calling me a liar and that's really hard for me <laughs> to deal with and go through. He's entirely being the victim in this situation. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene's response of not, I have morals and values and lying is bad all of the time, but those guys lied as well. There are people on their team who are also liars. No, it should just be lying is bad. You shouldn't do it. You should be accountable and honest to the public. But they don't think that way. And it's ridiculous that we're still talking about George Floyd because it was confirmed in court that he died of asphyxiation, like he was suffocated to death. That is a fact under the law of the United States. And the party of law and order is like, no, definitely not. And it's just racism. But of course, they're happy to defend someone because they're just happy to have this seat. They only care about winning in power. Yeah, and I, I do want to ask, do you think that the Republican Party will pressure him to resign? Because I feel very, you know, I, I feel like this interview was not what I expected. I expected some sort of like fluffy interview to let him, you know, attack the left and and sort of maintain a better public image. But I also don't have like hopes that they will give up that seat. So no. I think they they felt lucky that they even won it in the first place. Um, yeah, I don't think they would risk giving it up, and they're they're happy to just have another Republican in there, uh, given how contentious you know these midterms were. Uh, they were expecting a red wave. They didn't get it. They need that seat. Uh, so yeah, I don't think they're going to give it up.